let's maybe talk a bit more about the the research part uh so so let's assume you're an extremely paranoid researcher on on some very sensitive topic uh what do you think are some uh drastic but very powerful measurements that can be taken to be more private in research um well you could say uh, i would want to say that kind of being a journalist is in many ways in contradiction to being a privacy advocate because the job of a journalist is often to find loopholes in information systems, whether technical or social, and that may lead to infringements of privacy and secrecy, hopefully more secrecy than privacy, um, or at least put them at risk of being infringed, whereas the goal of a privacy advocate is to help close those loopholes as much as possible. Um, so for example, I don't maintain a public record of every person or company I've ever worked for. And I don't even usually give out resumes when I'm applying for work, or at least when I do, I'm very, very, very selective about what I put in the resume. Uh, but a lot of people maintain, you know, their employment status and history profiles on sites like LinkedIn. And, um, one of the research tools I actually use a lot is people's LinkedIn profiles to find out, you know, oh, they've just moved to this company. Where did they work before? Is that maybe relevant? Um, it was very relevant in uh, 2019 with Coinbase's accusation of Neutrino because um, Neutrino was, a, as, as far as I knew, like I didn't recognize the name at all. I just saw it was, okay, blockchain analysis company. Um, so it didn't catch my eye until someone else pointed out, oh, I went to the LinkedIn profile of uh, Neutrino and it has a guy listed there who says he was, he used to work at Hacking Team and he just had this on his LinkedIn profile. It was amazing. And I also then later after uh, Coinbase very, very quietly tr transitioned them out as they, as Brian Armstrong said, um, there was kind of no message about when they were leaving, have they left now? Are they still there? Who's still there? Uh, and I found out at least one of them left, I believe it was June or July of that year. So like several months later, based on information that he put in his LinkedIn profile. So, you know, a lot of these kind of social networking, social media sites are very useful because oftentimes they're pretty easy to search. Um, I mean, if you really know what you're doing, there's all these courses you can take about how like doing a real deep dive into like Facebook data, for example, like and, and not even having special access of any kind, just knowing how to use Facebook's uh, search engine. Um, and also, as we saw with a project called Transparency Toolkit, um, they had an IC Watch project, which aggregated the public profiles of everyone who identified with the intelligence community on LinkedIn or used relevant keywords in their profiles. Um, the result of that is that even when people collect information that you voluntarily share with the world yourself, um, your perspective on it may change when it's displayed in a particular context. Um, because, you know, all of those LinkedIn profiles were public. They mentioned, you know, working with certain programs that we now know to be, you know, NSA, uh, FBI, whatever programs in the intelligence community. Um, we're, we're now aware of that. In fact, we found out about programs that we didn't know exist even from the Snowden documents. So that was very interesting. Um, just putting that in context and collecting all of this public information together and suddenly people are mad that you're doxing them, even though technically they dox themselves. Um, and, but that's also, you know, this is relevant to regular people who maybe we don't want this to be happening to. Um, when you put your employment history on LinkedIn, you should be aware of the implications of that, especially when you consider the unknown future context, when you may be living somewhere else with someone else or in the same place under a different government or a different financial or social situation. Um, like a lot of this stuff has to do with memory, like our ability to remember and the internet, uh, as they say, never forgets. And memory is very important in a just society in order to hold people accountable for their actions, but in an unjust world that not only can't forget, but won't forgive, uh, then it can become a tyranny. 